Welcome to Sheep Suit, the home of grazable Christian thought. Today's brain graze, lies addictions tell you. There's a lot of stuff out there about addiction. Better stuff than this, I'm sure. I don't want to do the same stuff that's already out there, but I'll probably do that a little bit. I'm also not a trained psychotherapist and I don't do addiction counseling, except for myself. I just want to briefly share what I've learned about addictions and do it quickly. Addictions are like distinct life forms, like viruses, that take up residence in your brain and your body. They're like parasites. Whatever they are, they seem to have a life of their own and they want to live. Some Christians believe they are demons and that there are demons that specialize in certain addictions. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some addictions are and some aren't, but that doesn't matter for what I'm about to share. Addictions like to talk to you. They, 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 they tell you things, not with a voice, but they do. And the things they tell you are lies. The two lies my addictions have told me over the years are, one, you can't live without me. These addictions are there for a purpose. They are purpose-driven addictions and you need them. You need them to escape something awful, something you'd have to deal with if they weren't there for you. They're your trusty, faithful friends. They're there when you need them. Second lie or lie type, you can't beat me. If you ever turn against your faithful addiction friend, you'll lose. I'm here forever, so you'd better just give up and resign yourself to a life of feeding and caring for me because he ain't getting rid of me. But these are both lies. You can live without them and you can push back on them, contain them and beat them. And it may take a long time. Some of them took a long time to get there and they're not leaving quickly. Hippolytus of Rome, a church father from the late second century wrote in his letter concerning Hades. Don't go there by the way. Okay. This is, this is a bit thick and I'm going to do my best, but this is a church father writing about something people deal with today all the time. And he who hath at first lived a virtuous life, but towards the latter end falls into vice, these labors by him before endured shall be altogether vain and unprofitable, even as in a play brought to an ill catastrophe. In other words, you live a fantastic life, and at the end you fall into some horrible addiction, well, that fantastic life in the end doesn't matter because it's kind of like a play that might have been a, a comedy that was brought to a tragic end. Back to Hippolytus. Whosoever shall have lived wickedly and luxuriously may repent. However, there will be need of much time to conquer an evil habit. And even after repentance, his whole life must be guarded with great care and diligence after the manner of a body, which after it hath been a long time afflicted with a distemper, requires a stricter diet and method of living. For though it may be possible perhaps to break off the chain of our irregular affections at once, yet our amendment, our improvement, let's say, cannot be secured without the grace of God the prayers of good men and the help of the brethren and our own sincere repentance and constant care. It is a good thing not to sin at all. It is also a good, it is also good having sinned to repent as it is best to have health always, but it is a good thing to recover from a distemper. So even the ancients knew about addiction, even if they, they might not have had that exact word. I don't know. And they knew they needed to be pushed back against and that this struggle could take a long time, but had to be engaged in any way. As Christians, we're supposed to be controlled by our rational minds guided by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of being holy, separate from the world. It is our duty to recognize and push back against our addictions. And finally, the sad thing is that addictions, and I'm guessing probably all of them, trace back to a, a simple yes or no decision that was made in the past, the decision to face something unpleasant or try to escape it. 
the decision to turn off the rational mind rather than engage it. That time when that thing presented itself as a solution to a problem, when it knocked on the door of the mind and the heart and it was let in, and it was allowed to take up residence like it owned the place, and now it requires your support, or else. If you're watching this and, and you're struggling with addiction, I'm not a psychologist. Again, I don't do counseling. I don't have all the answers, but I might have one answer. Maybe just start pushing back. You may be surprised at what happens, surprised in a good way. That's all for now. Keep the wool out of your eyes.